after after all this is done, um, you want to always be looking at yourself, always be looking at your simulations, and just asking yourselves um, to review it. Be your own critic. So ask yourselves: Are the physical models appropriate? Is the is the flow turbulent? Is it unsteady? Are there compressibility effects? Like, what are the assumptions that you created? Do you think those assumptions are still valid? Are your boundary conditions correct? Is the computational domain large enough? Um, the values you chucked in appropriate? You know, often there are times where I'll call, uh, have some errors, and that's because I forgot to scale the mesh up or down. Um, and then is the mesh adequate, right? Have you been refining around areas that you thought? Did you pick up all the inflation and all your wake regions that you were after? And are you, you know, refining your, you resolving your vortices as well? Right. So it's again, it's important to to keep in mind CFD is an iterative process. So you'd start off by building your domain, building up your CAD. Uh, you create a, I, what I normally do is I create a simplified mesh. I'd set up my boundary conditions and post processing because I found that takes a bit of time. Um, but after it's been set up, it's pretty easy. You don't need to set it up again. I'd go back, understand what my wake, wake region is, what it's doing, how big it roughly is. I'd then refine the mesh around that region. I'd do some design iteration, so ensure that I've got a, a mesh study done to make sure I've got an appropriate mesh. And then you can go about and actually doing some design changes then go through the physical testing side of things and validating to ensure that you've um, you've made appropriate assumptions within your model. All right. So again, key points when it comes to the post-processing, pre and post side of things, um, using a pressure-based solver, solver, or using KOmega SST with curvature correction. Um, double check your boundary conditions all the time, double check your units, um, use a coupled solver and you want to monitor things around interest and you should need around 200 iterations for you to actually solve and to converge your simulation. Um, brilliant, so the other thing to keep in mind again, like we were talking about, if you're ever you know, looking at something and want to understand exactly what the model is, what it's doing, um, you know, ANSYS has a pretty, uh, is a very large kind of uh, fluent help help manual. So the help manual goes in to help you understand what's happening in the background and how best to use it. There's a user's manual there as well to help you with best practices and also a theory guide. So I'd recommend looking up Ansys Help. On top of that, as we we're talking about, Leap's got a CFD blog. So we go over a bunch of different things we might be interested in, especially things like modeling the boundary layer, understanding if you've got enough inflation elements, um, calculating the Y plus value as well. So I'll link out to that later on as well. So that's pretty much it for the presentation that I've got. Hopefully that shows you from start to finish how to set up an actual model and go through with it. All right, as we were talking about before, um, when you go into the, the CFD FSA webinar, We've got the geometry modeling, modeling side of things. We've got two tutorials there. Uh, there's two on the meshing. Uh, this is using fluent meshing and solving and then the demo documents as well. So the, refer the CAD that I've kind of been going through, um, I'll have up in the reference CAD. So if you want, you can step, by, you can step through them as well. Um, we've also got in under the fluids, there's a user guide and a best practice guide as well. Right, so if you go into meshing, by the way, you can find some more information about fluent meshing and turbulence modeling. So let's just log into this again. Again, turbulence modeling, I definitely have a look at the two lectures that we've got here. So both of them on turbulence modeling, what to select and what's happening. We've got a best practice guide. So this is just one of the lectures from the tutorial. So I have a read over that. And we've also got more information on fluent meshing. So the training material is there on the left-hand side, so you can go through everything. Or you can have a look at just the these ones here. All right. Brilliant. And if you have a look all the way at the bottom, there's tips and tricks. So this uh, links out straight away to the CFD blog. All right, and all tips and tricks that you can use. Brilliant. So that's it for me at the moment. Um, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask?